Washington State, probably the most famous state in the Pacific Northwest, and if not, a really close second to Oregon. It's home to Seattle, Amazon, Microsoft, Valve, Starbucks, and many more. Named after the first president of the United States and bearing his image on their flag, it's also known for its rain and cold weather in the West, Seattle especially so. Though no large population centers get much snow at all. Also known for part of the Cascade Mountain Range and its many volcanoes, Mount Rainier, Glacier Peaks, and perhaps the most infamous, Mount St. Helens, which erupted last on July 10th, 2008. It was the western terminus for the first northern transcontinental railroad and much more. But unless you took school there or are very interested in U.S. history down to the states, you may not know the subject of this video, the story of Washington State. Our first topic is called the Kennewick Man, one of the oldest and most complete human remains ever found on the continent. It was found in Washington in 1966, so fairly recently and it was named after the town in which he was found, Kennewick, Washington. Alongside the Kennewick Man, the region, like most all in the country, was home to aboriginals. These tribes were known for their totem poles, ornate canoes, and masks. They excelled in salmon fishing, and especially among the Macaw tribe, whale hunting. As for the non-coastal tribes, they had a very different set of skills, including hunting and relatively primitive agriculture, though they also had some dependency on salmon in the Columbia River subsidiaries. Unfortunately, these tribes were devastated in the smallpox epidemic of the 1770s. Later on, in 1775, the first landing by European explorers was made by Spanish Captain Don Bruno de Hecta, who arrived aboard the Santiago, which was in a two-ship flotilla. A flotilla is pretty much a small formation of non-capital ships, examples being, say, frigates, torpedo boats, and the such, with another ship, the Sonora. As soon as he landed, he claimed the land for Spain all the way to up towards Prince William Sound. Apparently, they did this because of the Treaty of Tordesillas, which Spain claimed made the entire Pacific Ocean a Spanish lake. All right, so all the shores that contacted the Pacific were to be claimed by the Spanish for their empire. Later on, in 1778, the British explorer James Cook sighted Cape Flattery, which lay at the very tip of the Olympic Peninsula. He sighted the cape at the entrance to the Strait of Juan de Fuca, which he did not realize existed. It wasn't until later on, in 1787, that the captain of the Imperial Eagle, Charles William Barclay, sighted it. Later on, two Spanish explorers, Manuel Quimper and Francisco de Eliza, in 1790 and 1791 respectively, as well as British explorer George Vancouver in 1792, finally explored the strait. The British-Spanish Nootka Convention of 1790 ended all Spanish claims of exclusivity and opened the northwest coast to explorers and traders from nations other than Spain. Most notably, of course, Britain. Soon after, Robert Gray, the namesake of a Gray Harbor County, discovered the mouth of the Columbia River, which he named after his ship, the Columbia. And in 1792, Gray established sea otter pelt trading, and the Lewis and Clark expedition finally arrived in the state on October 10th, 1805. On July 9th, 1811, Explorer David Thompson, on his voyage down the Columbia River, camped at the confluence with the Snake River and created a notice that the county was being claimed by the British and stating the intention of the Northwest Company was to build a trading post on the site. Britain and the United States agreed to a joint occupancy of all lands west of the Continental Divide to the Pacific Ocean, which was a clause of the Anglo-American Convention of 1818 which had established the 49th parallel as the international boundary west from the Lake of the Wood to the Rocky Mountains. Many people simply know the Lake of the Woods as the lake that gave the U.S. its northernmost contiguous point, as a small piece of land that has its only land connection with the rest of the country via Canada. Resolution to any issues concerning territory and treaties was shelved until a later date. In 1819, Spain ceded their rights north of the 42nd parallel to the U.S., but apparently these rights didn't include possession. Over the next few decades, disputes along the border of the Oregon boundary failed to settle with neither party being able to find a compromise, which led to the territory being under joint occupancy for several decades, which caused American settlers to move into the territory, which the Hudson's Bay Company had previously disputed since it had conflicted with fur trading in the area. However, they later reversed their stance so they could attempt to maintain British control over the Columbia District. Under order of the governor of the Hudson's Bay Company, Sir George Simpson, a fur trapper by the name of James Sinclair, led about 200 settlers west from the Red River Colony to Seattle on Hudson's Bay Company farms near Fort Vancouver in 1841. The party's journey took them across the Rocky Mountains into the Columbia Valley, near the present-day location of the Radium Hot Springs in British Columbia. They then went southwest, following the Kootenai River and Columbia River. Despite sending those 200 settlers down, Britain eventually gave all land south of the 49th parallel to the U.S. as a clause of the Oregon Treaty on the 15th of June, 1846. Marcus Whitman and a group of missionaries established a few missions and a settlement for Whitman himself in what is now southeastern Washington near Walla Walla County in 1836. This was in territory of both the Cayuse and Nez Pierce tribes, 
Whitman's settlement would become helpful for the Oregon Trail to get established over the following decades.